And we want to learn more about the potential effects of breathing in those tiny particles in the aftermath of a fire. And the fire survivors may face something known as fire brain. And joining us now live is Dr. Sam Evans, Chief of Pulmonology for Hawaii Pacific Health and also a doctor at Straub. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Can you explain how, how wildfire smoke uh, and even what's in the air weeks later, how that can potentially damage your lungs or parts of your body or your brain permanently? So you got to think of uh, smoke inhalational injuries as acute effects, subacute effects, and then long-term effects. Acutely, if you're in an enclosed space, you're going to get a loss of oxygen. And so that's what many people die of, actually, is the loss of oxygen and exposure to toxic gases like carbon monoxide. So that low oxygen and the toxic gases can also affect the brain and other organ systems, so not just the respiratory tract. The third thing that happens acutely is usually thermal injury, the heat of the fire and the smoke itself. And that, uh, that thermal injury leads to uh, bronchospasm, inflammation in the airways, and that can turn into subacute problems of chronic cough, shortness of breath, and more chronic problems, asthma, COPD, chronic uh, trouble breathing. And then also some of those particulate matter that is inhaled, such as asbestos or carbon monoxide, um, can have long-term effects, such as increasing your risk for lung cancer. And even sticking with long-term, it, can it cause Alzheimer's or dementia or even Parkinson's disease or anything like that? Um, I'm sure that uh, exposure to these types of chemicals, hydrogen cyanide, phosphogene, ammonia, sulfides, it can't be good for any organ system, including the brain. So I, I'm sure that there's uh, long-term sequelae. And, you know, we heard the story of that man who went to help rescue others. He wasn't protected, obviously. Nobody expected this. But what do you doctors do to treat those who come in after breathing, smoke? Uh, is there anything you can do to prevent or even reverse those harmful effects? No, and thanks so much for asking this question because it's so important as uh, the Lahaina residents return to where their homes were and, and uh, go through what's left. Um, when you're going through the, the ash, you're actually kicking up all that toxic uh, particulate matter into the air again where it can be rebreathed. So anyone going into that environment should be wearing at least an N95 mask or a respirator, uh, eyewear to cover the eyes, long sleeve shirt, jeans or sturdy pants, and boots so their feet don't get hurt, and definitely gloves if they're going to handle anything. And what would you recommend for folks who, you know, are still having problems, maybe from smoke inhalation from that day, or just in the aftermath? Uh, they might not be severe enough to have to go to the hospital, but what would you recommend for them to be able to do at home to treat it? Um, just good clean air and uh, avoiding reintroduction to, you know, smoke in their environment or exhaust. They could go and see their primary care provider for a trial of a bronchodilator or an inhaled corticosteroid to try and calm things down. If they continue to have symptoms of wheezing, shortness of breath, persistent coughing, uh, then referral to pulmonologists would be appropriate for additional testing. Dr. Evans, uh, what signs down the road should these fire survivors look out for regarding long-term effects? Um, I don't know if the public knows, uh, but firefighters are screened annually with a full pulmonary function test um, just because of their you know, constant exposure to smoke and the risks of developing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COPD. Um, and so, yeah, the, these these types of patients and, of course, the workers in these environments should be screened for lung damage. And finally, we want to just ask you, you know, speaking of lung damage, how likely is it that people develop any of these symptoms or problems that you've been talking about? How common or how rare are they? Oh, I wouldn't call it rare. Um, so if you have a really bad acute injury, most don't survive it because of the low oxygen and the carbon monoxide. And it's actually people that die in burns like this, the majority die from the inhalational part, not from the burn to the skin part. So um, if you can get through that, um, you know, then a lot, a lot of patients will develop hyperreactive airways 
disease or asthma. And that may not begin right away in, in a lot of patients who had maybe just a, a smaller smoke exposure. It may take uh, uh, five days, seven days before they start saying, hey, you know, my, my chest feels tight and, and uh, I, I hear myself wheezing when I lay down at night to sleep. And so it, it can be subacute from the initial injury and it can persist and become a chronic problem. Well, it's, it's really good to, uh, thank you so much for shedding light on this. It's, it's really interesting and good for people to know because a lot of folks dealing with this right now. Thank you, Dr. Sam Evans, Chief yeah. of Pulmonology for Hawaii Pacific Health. We appreciate it.